Hello everyone, my name is Tyler, and this week I'll be going more in-depth in particle hierarchies, and I'll be showing everyone how to use them um, by creating an example effect, so we'll be lear learning by doing today. So let's get started. Uh, the effect that I want to create today is kind of an, an implosion, kind of explosion effect. So first we want the particles to kind of slowly move inwards toward uh, a certain point, and then we want them to explode outwards, kind of creating a, a gathering of energy and then a massive, like, violent explosion of it. So to do that, we're going to need some particle hierarchies, but first we need to uh, create our first effect, so let's do that. Um, I'm going to zero out the transform, and um, this is important for particle hierarchies. I'll explain more uh, once we add our second system in. But for now, let's just focus on creating an explosion effect. So like last time, we're just going to want um, uh, to make a sphere, and then since we're doing an implosion effect, we might want to make it a little bit bigger than uh, our other sphere. And then we're going to want to have some negative speed, so let's do that real quick. Um, and then we're going to want the lifetime to be a little bit, a little bit lower, so then uh, the particles aren't going to be basically passing through the center and continuing on the other side. So let's change that to 1. That's looking pretty good so far. Let's add in um, some more particles, and then remember to make it a burst of particles instead of just a rate of particles, because we want this effect to um, basically show that it's like a one-time gathering of uh, energy in an implosion in fact, instead of like a kind of steady, slow gathering. So let's change that real quick. And then reset the system so we can see it a little bit more clearly. Um, interesting. Uh, because it, so what happened right there is um, why you can't really see it um, happening so very often is that the duration of the entire system is five seconds. So it'll reset after every five seconds, so if we change the duration to be a little bit less, we'll be able to see it a little bit more often, so that'll, that'll help. Um, so let's make the sphere a little bit bigger so the particles aren't passing through each other so much. And then make them a little bit smaller. And then increase the size a little bit more. should be good enough for now. Um, let's create our next system. So that's going to be the explosion effect. So we just create another particle system, go back up to the transform, zero out those values, and turn these tabs on so we can see it, and then we just drag this to the other system that we've created, and then Unity will create a hier hierarchy for that. So the first thing, as um, I talked about a little bit in the last video, you'll see that both particle systems are playing at once. Um, so that's so you can see how your particle systems are kind of interacting with each other, and to give you a preview of what it's going to look like when you put it in your game or video or something. So we have our two effects right here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I zeroed out these transforms, because in Unity, the child's uh, transform values are determined um, or are defined in relation to the parent's transform values. So to show that, I'm going to move this um, a little bit in the z direction, and as you can see it's a z value change right here, and then I'm going to move the parent system uh, in the negative x direction. And the first thing that you'll notice is that it moved both of them instead of just uh, the one. So when you're just moving the child, um, the only the child system will move. When you're moving the parent, every um, the parent and all of its children will move because, as I said before, the child's position is defined in relation to the parent. So you can see right here that there's no change in um, x um, x values in the transform, and that's because um, this uh, child particle system, it's basically world, it's, its coordinate system is now defined in relation to this particle system right here, the parent particle system, so that's treating it as um, the origin of the coordinate system basically. So to it, it doesn't really know um, kind of what's going on in the overall grid in the scene. It's just caring about uh, the parent system. So that's important to keep in mind because if your parent system um, is kind of modified in any way, um, that transformation is going to be applied, applied to all the children too, so if you rotate it or move it by a little bit, um, it might produce um, 
kind of un uh, unintended like um, variance in the transform for all the children when you actually put it in your game. Because if you're spawning um, particles in very specific locations, it might mess up um, how you want them to look exactly. So just be aware of that as you're creating your particle systems. So um, let's start creating our little explosion effect then. Um, so again, we're just going to go to a sphere, make it pretty small, and then we're going to change it to a burst of particles. Um, so as you can see right here, the time is kind of messed up in our particle system, and that's um, because of two reasons. One, the, um, the child uh, emitter duration is longer than the parent's emitter duration, so they're going to be going off at different times. So let's change that real quick, change the duration to 2, then reset it a little bit, and now they'll be going off at about the same time. So now the lifetime of the child's particle, child particles are longer than the parent particles, so they're going to be lingering along while the effect is restarting again. So let's change that as well. So now we can see that um, the effects are kind of happening both at the same time. So we don't really want to do that either. Um, we want the implosion effect to occur, and then once that's done, um, we want the explosion effect to occur. So let's go to our uh, explosion effect again, and then change the start delay to about 1, which is how long the particles in the parent system are going to last. So as you can see right now, they're kind of going off um, in about the same time that we want them to. The implosion occurs and the explosion occurs. So um, there's one extra thing that we can change about the implosion effect that will make things a little bit easier um, to see. And is in, instead of having each particle spawn inside the circle, let's just have them uh, spawn along the edges. So then you have a little bit more uniform effect. This allows us to also um, kind of decrease the size of our sphere. Um, so we can even decrease it by about half and then have sim a similar kind of effect. So that looks a lot better because the particles aren't uh, passing through each other anymore in the implosion effect. They're all, they all look like they're going towards the center and forming this little ball, and then they all kind of explode out. So let's make the explosion a little bit more interesting by adding some gravity and then giving it a burst of speed. And then we also want to match it um, with the implosion, implosion particles, so we want them to be about the same size. So that's about it for this week on particle hierarchies. Um, just wanted to show you guys um, kind of what they were used for um, and what they kind of look like and what kind of things happen when you um, use them. Things to look out for, like the transform that I was talking about earlier, uh, making sure that durations for the particle systems are matching, and then also making sure that um, if you want the particles to look like they're coming from the same system, having similar values in here, um, like size and then lifetime, and then um, kind of how quickly they're moving. So that makes the system a lot more consistent, and um, people may not, may not even know that there's multiple particle systems going on at the same time. So um, that makes things look a lot better than they would before. So that's about it for this week. Next week I'm going to continue going through um, all the little things that you can do in particles. So I'll be going over limit velocity over lifetime. And then if I have time, I'll go over force over lifetime. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching.